Hi everybody, Golden Era Bookworm here. Today I'd like to talk about the best examples from the Golden Era of ribcage development. We're going to go through kind of a little bit of a time travel starting from the 1940s, the late 1940s, moving into the 50s, 60s and 70s and see at least my favorite examples of what I consider to be the best ribcage development on a number of bodybuilders. In this particular first slide, we see Clarence Ross, a true Superman of the 40s, of the late 40s, showing not only great muscular bulk, but very good ribcage um, development. You can really see that, um, although he's not got a great vacuum there, uh, his, his uh, expansion of his chest, that, that possibility that he has, really raises his pectorals and gives the appearance of a larger structure with tapering down. And I've been asked so many times, why is it that, why is it golden era that ribcage development is so important? Well, I hope you can see the main reason here is being that the display of the chest, shoulders and arms appears so much greater when you have a proper ribcage development. Also, ribcage development um, combined with a vacuum Let's go through the other bodybuilders that show this phenomenal ribcage development. Now one of my favorites has always been Alan Steffen. Um, in the late 1940s, he may not have had, have had the amount of muscular mass that you can see in the 50s, 60s and 70s. Nevertheless, with his more or less athletic physique, you can still see, I mean he's just resting his arm on that log for God's sake and he's flexing that softball sized bicep and those relatively well sized pectorals are sitting on like slabs of muscle on that beautifully expanded rib cage and you can see that it tapers down on both photos to a small waist. I love the, uh, the, the version of the golden era of the side chest pose and it's very clear. Rib cage expansion is best displayed in the old in, I'll repeat, in the old version of the side chest pose, not the side chest pose that is uh, performed nowadays. Now this is one of my favorite bodybuilders from the late 40s, John Farbotnik, and in particular, one of my favorite, probably my favorite uh, photo of a side chest pose, uh, really displaying the ribcage development. John Farbotnik, now you can see that he's, he's um, his, his particular rib cage, you can see that the, 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 the hollow bit where the vacuum begins is quite high. And this is something that was typical of really good rib cage development. Bodybuilders that had an excellent rib cage development really had that, that the end of the sternum being very, very high up on their chest. It's not necessarily a genetic deformity, but because it sits so high, it allows the rib cage to actually uh, develop great volume and I mean I've said it again and I'll, and I'll say it again I mean damn I mean look at John Farbotnik's ribcage development here those slabs of pec sitting on top of that are almost horizontal it is fantastic look at that coconut shaped uh, deltoid sitting on that on that shoulder and, and that softball sized arm it is so beautiful it is phenomenal he looks herculean this is beautiful this is what to me a side chest should look like and the reason Again, the reason why ribcage development was so so um, practiced and adhered to back in the day was because it made you look even better. It made you look Herculean. Those slabs of muscle sitting on this skeletal structure expanded gives you that phenomenal look. It's, it's really awesome. Another great bodybuilder of the time was George Eiferman. And George Eiferman also had, look at him, he's just sitting down there doing some uh, dumbbell curls and you can see that he's he's got a rather enormous chest he was very well known for his rib cage development and his well developed chest muscles again i love the old uh, the old version of the side chest pose which really shows off the rib cage development in all of these bodybuilders abe goldberg another great example now although he didn't have as great muscular development as I, I guess as uh, John Farbotnik or uh, Clarence Ross etc you can still see that his rib cage development enhanced it enhances the appearance of his muscles just like Alan Steffen 
He wasn't hugely proportioned. He looked more athletic, just like Abe Goldberg. But again, the fact that those ribs are so well developed, it really enhances the look of that physique. It really makes you look, it really gives you the appearance of having a very large developed chest, well developed shoulders and arms because it tapers so well down into the vacuum. So Abe Goldberg, because he had such a great development, really got many titles and um, yeah, just um, just looked phenomenal. Now Reg Park, I mean, you just have to look at these images to, to understand why Arnold what saw Reg Park was like, damn, I need to be like this guy. This guy's my idol. This guy's this guy's gonna be my blueprint. It's sitting right in front of me. Look at that phenomenal ribcage development. It is enormous. His chest is like a goddamn barrel. And of course, with thick slabs of muscle on top of that, he just looks like freaking Hercules reincarnated. It's unbelievable. Reg Park had an incredible chest. And again, with with packing on muscle on top of a large barrel-like chest, you just look enormous. You just look huge, but not huge freaky. It looks in proportion. It looks aesthetic. Leroy Colbert, the first man with 20 inch arms. I mean, you can definitely see that in this in, in both of these side chest uh, shots. But Jesus, look at that. Look at that uh, ribcage development as well. He had a phenomenal ribcage development thanks to enormous latissimus dorsi development. And again, those well-developed chest muscles sitting on top are almost horizontal on that ribcage. Again, the ribcage, when expanded, gives you this huge look up on top and it tapers down beautifully into, into the vacuum stomach. It's just beautiful aesthetic lines, amazing development by these old bodybuilders and of course now we've moved into the 50s bodybuilders with Reg Park starting off and now Leroy Colbert. Freddie Ortiz, this is one of my favorite bodybuilders from the 50s. I mean <laughs> these photos just speak for themselves. I mean look how high that sternum finishes and again it's probably this genetic, um, not necessarily deformity but just his genetics were just made for phenomenal ribcage development. That high ending of the sternum allows his chest to be developed so well. He's arching his back and again that makes the ribcage almost horizontal at the top and those slabs of pec muscle sitting there combined with that veiny enormous arm, I mean unbelievable and look at that second shot you could almost not just draw a, a V there you could draw a Y for God's sake thick arms huge lats a great chest development look at those forearms they're at the burst and then all of that tapers down into that impossibly tiny waist that is so aesthetic so you ask me why golden era should we develop our ribs because it gives you this fantastic V tapered look whether you're doing a side chest pose you, you you have this wide start at the top that tapers down into a small waist it just looks phenomenal very aesthetic we move on to the 60s now we've got Sergio Oliva now I know he took a copious amount of steroids but once again look at that rib cage development of course the steroids will help with muscular growth and of course look at his arms and his chest they're just exploding and on top of a rib cage he looks like freaking the muscle god it's unbelievable no wonder he was called the myth of course he had fantastic genetics combined with performance enhancing drugs but you combine that again with rib cage development no wonder the 60s and 70s bodybuilders they, they always idolized they idolized because they just had incredible physiques they built on the knowledge from the 40s, 50s, and 60s, and just developed these fantastic physiques. Serge Nubre, I mean, he was he was very well known from the movie Pumping Iron, a very aesthetic bodybuilder. Once again, uh, phenomenal ribcage development. That old uh, old school side chest pose, showcasing the development of the arms, the shoulder, and the chest. And I mean, he's just looking so relaxed. I'm the man. You definitely are, Serge. Unbelievable. He had phenomenal genetics and again showcasing his fantastic muscular development on that phenomenally expanded rib cage. Now here is a, probably one of the most exaggerated, one of the most hugest rib cage development in history. Mike Katz. Look at that. Look at that second image. He's just standing and his chest is bursting out almost horizontally. I mean, 
<laughs> Christ, you, you, you walk, you, you'd probably walk past Mike and always just bump into his chest because it's just sticking out there. It's unbelievable. Mike has, ad has admitted that his sternum was short. And this, this um, particular um, genetic, I guess, predisposition allowed him to develop this almost horizontal chest. And again, putting muscle on top of that rib cage looks unbelievable. I'm pretty sure he could balance a, a glass of water just like uh, uh, Williamson could in, in the 50s on that chest. Again, uh, he, he, he wasn't the most proportionate bodybuilder, but having this rib cage development gave him probably uh, a lot of points in the side chest against other bodybuilders, I'm absolutely sure. Phenomenal. Probably the most freakiest rib cage development in history has to go to Mike Katz. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. My favorite, of course, of course, has to be Arnold Schwarzenegger's rib cage development. Not only did it combine uh, a, a lot of muscular mass development uh, on his body, he, he actually combined this with phenomenal rib cage development. His impossibly tiny waist, enormous uh, rib cage development, and, and you slab those muscles on top. I mean, no wonder, no wonder these images, especially the, the one on the, on the left, shocked the bodybuilding world in the late 60s when he just arrived in America. Joe Wader's eyes must have burst out when he saw this. Unbelievable. He saw the potential in Arnold. And of course, with that muscular mass and that kind of enormous chest, enormous ribcage, he, he was going to take over the bodybuilding world. And did he not? As he obviously developed uh, further, I mean, look at that image on the right. Look at that. I mean, is Arnold, is, is, he, is he admiring himself? He's just standing. Look at that chest to, to waist ratio. He's just standing relaxed after a good pump and those slabs of muscle on top of that ribcage look impossible. It looks photoshopped for God's sake, but it is not. He's just so well developed um, in the ribcage that he makes his body look just huge and it's yet aesthetic, incredibly aesthetic. This last image probably has to be Arnold's most famous side chest pose. And I mean, who would not be impressed by that? He's ripped to shreds. Those enormous pectorals are sitting on that fantastic rib cage. Look at Franco's face. He's probably going, no way. Unbelievable. I, I can't beat that. Who can? Who could possibly beat that side chest pose? Again, the reason, the reason for a rib cage development is to hit that old school side chest pose and just beat everybody else. Because if you had that rib cage development, it didn't really matter how much muscle you had. You, you you looked impressive, you looked huge, and you looked aesthetic. And I mean, Franco's face just says it all. I, I'm dead in this, in this Olympia. I, there's no way I'm going to beat that. <laughs> and he never did beat Arnold, did he? So I hope you've enjoyed this video geeking out on ribcage development. And, and I think these are some of the best shots uh, ever captured from the golden era on fantastic ribcage development on, on these particular bodybuilders. If you've enjoyed watching this video and are you inspired now to do pullovers and breathing squats? I hope you are. I hope you are. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't. Uh, leave me a comment and thank you for watching. This is the Golden Era Bookworm. Go do some pullovers and some breathing squats. <laughs> Bye for now.